think uh, I stop there. Stop there for you. Well, <clears throat> and now uh, one, two, three. <coughs> two, three. I come back. Uh, same for a while to suck. But to, to try to go a, a step further, that is that if we are in the state I described this moment, that is the state where there is no longer any temple inside the world but the entire world can be said to be the temple, then we not only we are facing the possibility that there is no longer any sacred place, that is not, not only not, not any sacred division between the, the place where the sacred is <coughs> and the place where it is no longer sacred, the profane. But there is, there is, uh, so there is this possibility that everything become profane. It has been a, a, a phrase frequently said there is nothing more sacred in this world. Maybe, maybe still today people can say that. But sure is that. I don't know. From, I think from the beginning of the modern time, I mean from the Renaissance, uh, this phrase started. And even, even. Uh, Nothing more is sacred. There is, so, because there is no longer any recognition of the, the space of sacrality, then of a border between the sacred and the profane, and then of the, the, the way to go over the border, that is the way of the sacrifice, or the way to replace the sacrifice when there is no longer a sacrifice. So there is the possibility of the absolute, the total, general profanation. But an absolute profanation is in a way, impossible, because to uh, to have a profane, you have to have a sacred. If there is no longer any sacred, there is no longer any profane. So, uh, what can we do? Oh, what is really our war? If there is no longer neither sacred not profane. I said that <coughs> nevertheless we all know something about the sacred. We all understand that something, uh, certain moment, certain place, and maybe something belonging to any being, especially to any living being and to any relation, maybe precisely belonging to the sense, mm -hmm. the fact that there is sense <coughs> is perhaps the sacred or, or is perhaps what the sacred becomes for us. But if we are no longer able to really distinguish between sacred and profane, uh, and if the sacred in that way is um, everywhere, 
present, maybe that means something else. That means either, either we use any, uh, any relation to sake, uh, and but precisely, uh, I think this is quite impossible. If, if we would enter, really enter a world where, what, where we would have no, no, not any uh, sense, not any, for example, not, not any sense that uh, it is better not to kill the other than to kill or what I want to kill. Uh, we would not even be able to make a world. Because a world, a world in the in the very meaning of the world, the world is a place where sense is possible. World is not universe. <coughs> world is a world, you know, the, the world. The world is uh, something we can understand if we think of uh, what we say. If we say, for example, the world of say, the world of Vinci, or the world of um, Debussy. Uh, the world of uh, Michael Jackson. Uh, the world. <laughs> there is a world. Yeah. Uh, so, the, the world. The world means each time the world a uh, certain kind of unity inside which there is a, a circulation of uh, um, relation of meaning and, and more than meanings and uh, so uh, this is if you maybe the, the most clear is uh, if you take the, the, the word of an artist I say I say the word of the Bussy uh, maybe not everybody knows the Bussy the word of Mozart the word of Mozart is what made possible that by listening a, a short piece of music, <coughs> a short piece taken out of a whole piece of music, you may recognize Mozart. There's, there's many chances, even if you are not a, a specialist in music and musicology, a historian of music, there is a good chance you recognize Mozart. Because of all the the, 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 the sounding word of Mozart is not the one of Beethoven, of course, not even <coughs> of Haydn. Uh, some pieces of first Mozart are very close to Haydn, but yes, you, you can't make, make, make a mistake. But if you if you say, oh, this should be from Mozart and this is from Haydn, uh, this is because the the. the piece of music is very close to both, uh, 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 is, is, uh, belongs to the world which is in between Haydn and Mozart. And of course there are uh, inter world if you want. So, or it is, is it maybe uh, easier to say the world of Picasso. If you, you can take it out uh, was all, if you want, all the Picasso, the, the blue period, the, the tin period, etc. But the, the Picasso starting with the cubism. No, I'm, I'm wrong because there, there are uh, many works of Picasso of the period uh, that you, you can't take from as works from Bach or Juan Gris. <coughs> no, there are some.
disease. Once again, this is a kind of interval. So. But starting at, at a certain point in this period, uh, you recognize Picasso without any doubt. Even if, you know, now I'm unable to, to give you the analysis of the, the shapes, the, the lines, and the colors, and the, uh, which belong to Picasso, but I think it is very difficult to not to organize Picasso. Well, the same, the same with Matisse. Uh, um, so, certain worlds are more pregnant, more visible uh, than other one, but so, so you understand what, what a, a world means is a totality of cells. In a certain way, uh, the totality is closed on itself <coughs> because it consists of the, the, the relation of the different parts to themselves. But in, in another way, this is precisely because there is one world, the world of Picasso, that you can uh, take this world in form to the world, say, of Matisse, or to the world of Marc, or I don't know, and, uh, and then you can enter something more complicated, that is the world of painting between, you know, between uh, uh, or during during the first half of the 20th century <coughs> or things like that. So, <coughs> a world is a, a certain, I would say, a unity of sense, but not the unity as one sense, because may maybe there is never one sense. The, the sense is, is a is a movement, is, is going from, from one to the other as well, going from one form to the other uh, as going from one person to the other. So, <coughs> if, if uh, the sacred has been you know, the condition for sense, that is, uh, the sacred has been the condition for the possibility of addressing the thought, as I, as I said before, thought is all the time connected <coughs> to what is not understandable, but but is um, can be designated, can be fed can be the project <coughs> design. So if the sacred has been the what gives the possibility to make sense because uh, in a certain way with the profane there is there is once again a lot of meaning but no sense. When we are in the profane, like we are a lot of time in our life, we are in the meaning. Once again, I, I go out of my home, I buy the newspaper to pay because I, I want to read the news and I want to eat bread. I I can do that all with, without any, at least any conscious uh, relation to the understandable. If I do that, I will stop uh, on the street and think, oh, what, are, what I'm doing in the world. And then the newspaper and the bed will uh, disappear and maybe I will disappear at the end. But, 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 but the, the, the possibility of making sense 
is not is not destroyed. It is here. It is still here. It is. It is. I would say it is on on the. Uh, I say on the surface, yes, on the surface, not under the surface, not hidden under the surface, the, but on the surface of every thing. Because, because if there is no a special place for the sacred, a place to which I should have a relationship to go there, to go, to go, physically or to go in uh, my thinking. <coughs> there is everywhere the possibility of, uh, I would say, of engaging the way of sense, the making sense. But making sense means, at the same time, receiving sense. Sense is not something I, I make and produce. It is something I receive, something maybe I enter, but something which enters <coughs> in me at the same time. Or I cannot enter sense without being, uh, enter, but being penetrated <coughs> by sense. Okay. That all to say that maybe uh, we have another word to designate what is at stake in a world where the sacred is not or no longer to be recognized as such. And the word may be the saint. This is something I take from Levinas, from the <coughs> sacred to the saint. The saint, so the saint, or, uh, or the holy, you don't say the holy, you say the saint. What is the holiness of the sainteté? You say sainteté, I think it's holiness. What is the holiness? In a certain extent, maybe, it's possible to say that the holiness is, how to say, is a sacred without sacred. Besides, is a sacred out of the sacred. But is the, the holiness is, is not submitted to a special rule of uh, separation. So the, the holiness is maybe what is totally a part of of the border, the separation, the border and the, the possibility of the interdiction of the danger <coughs> uh, to go over the border. Maybe for the holiness there is no, no transgression. Then to understand it, I think we have to think about what uh, means <coughs> the holiness, the saint for uh, Christianity. Uh, by thinking that I, I don't think about the saint uh, made saint sanctified uh, by uh, by Rome, you know, and this is something quite different. It is uh, precisely it is a, a process of sacrality, you know, the decision to say that uh, this man, this woman, uh, become first uh, beatus and, and among sanctus. No, there is a, there is a first step. I don't remember which before Beatus. Uh, this is this is a, this is, uh, this submitted to to uh, 
hold to decision of the of the one which is called the Holy Father, Saint Pierre, the Pope. So, precisely, the word Holy uh, <coughs> is all the time in circulation in, in the Christianity, but what it means really is, it says, not given by the official decision of the church to, precisely, to consecrate somebody as a saint, but is given by what is uh, the, the, the most, the most, uh, yes, the most visible the image of the saint. And you know, the saint is precisely the one who has no, nothing uh, as a sacred property. The saint, here you, you can take uh, all the saint. Uh, of course, of course, we can only speak of saint well, sanctified by the church. I say, I don't know, say saint, saint <coughs> François d'Assise, Franciscus from Assisi, or uh, but some are sanctified for quite different reasons. For example, uh, really Thomas von Aquino is, is sanctified because it is a big doctor or a big theologian and philosopher. But a theologian and a philosopher is not especially an example of holiness. It is maybe a great, great, great uh, thinker, okay, but there is different, but the, you know, the, the main image we have of the saint are the men of the poor people or people uh, uh, being poor by, by, by their will and, uh, and searching to have a life not different from the, the, the rest of the life of the mankind, <coughs> even, even uh, close to the animals, you know, this all the story of, uh, how you say, Franciscus? <coughs> Francis. Hmm? Saint Francis. Saint Francis, yes. yes. Uh, which is a very important figure in the history of the, the, the saint. But the saint, I would say, is the one who does not distinguish oneself from the other and, and even from nature, but by not distinguishing himself, at the same time, uh, <coughs> lives in, in quite different relationship to the world. <coughs> it is often said that the, the saint is, for example, is peaceful, is passionate. Is, is, a, is friendly with <coughs> and he, he even even is uh, uh, is able to uh, to become um, how say, victim martyr for <coughs> for his faith. So all all those uh, uh, all those uh, character of the same have something in common. I would say on, on <coughs> both sides. On one side, that is the the non difference, the, the, the non separation with the world. That is the same from himself or herself 
is one who lives in the world without any, uh, I would say, without any knowledge of separation between the sacred and the profane. That's the reason for what, as it is well known, um, many saints uh, are the great, are great sinners. Francis, I don't know, but uh, you know, more, more close to us, uh, people like uh, Charles de Foucault, for example, uh, with the great sinner, and Augustine. Once again, Augustine. Augustine is not only a great uh, thinker, philosopher, theologian, but Augustine, I think, he is a, a saint. Uh, Maybe for that reason, for that intellectual reason, maybe. But at the same time, the, the life of Augustine shows something from the <coughs> from the uh, capacity to be in the world as a, as a sinner and, and not not uh, not to be all the time coming back to the repentance, to the confession, even if it's the right, the confession, but the confession, the confession is precisely the exposition of all the life, all his life, as the life of the sinner. He is. But what means sinner? Sinner for a saint means only uh, to be uh, exposed to the grace of God. If we take <coughs> out God, the grace, etc., uh, it means uh, we take out the sin by the same uh, gesture, if you want, but it means uh, to be uh, ready and open to enter in a certain sense, any, any possible relation. But, I would say, not, only not the relation which breaks the relation. That is a relation of, uh, yes, of uh, attacking the other, uh, killing the other, but as well, uh, I don't know, uh, submitting the other to the to my force, my violence, uh, my, my, my physical or my intellectual or my verbal violence. So, this is, this is why the image of the saint has been often uh, assimilated to the image of the, the sheep, the poor sheep, who goes to the Abattoir, where he will be killed. You know? And uh, certainly there is, there is something with this <coughs> image of the sheep, and you know, like in the gospel, the history of the, the only sheep for which the shepherd go, uh, goes to, to find it, uh, and, and that's the, the, the 99 other, only to find one. Uh, I would say yes, that the same is the one which is in a certain way in the abandonment. <coughs> abandonment. But to be abandoned uh, doesn't mean to, to be uh, without any resource <coughs> or mm, to, to suffer everything uh, without any reason. No, this is not a question of passivity. And this is the, the, maybe the main point. I would say the saint is the one uh, which is precisely absolutely not in the passivity, 
But maybe, and once again, this is, I say that according to Levinas, as Levinas says, in a passivity more passive than any passivity. That is not a passivity opposed to the activity, but if, if yes, if one wants to say that with this word, in an activity <coughs> which is the activity to receive all what can be given as a possibility of sense. There is, there is uh, uh, one contemporary writer and artist, Pasolini, <coughs> Pasolini uh, which wrote so, 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 something about the saint, about holiness, and about which uh, my, my <coughs> friend, uh, Lakula Bart, wrote a very small book with the title Pasolini, Une Sainteté. Pasolini, uh, Holiness. And uh, La Coulabat wrote that. La Coulabat was table opposed to any image of a saint, and uh, especially the Catholic saint, because he was from his origin a Protestant, and Protestants uh, don't like the saint. They don't like the saint uh, of the Catholic Church, of course. But the, the holiness of Pasolini, um, what does it mean? That means that uh, Pasolini has been uh, has been somebody with uh, an extraordinary openness. To, uh, in a certain way, to, to so much so different way of practicing, uh, of practicing not art, art, yes, <laughs> of course he was an artist, and from the, the holiness we can come back to the, to the art. But I would say the, the important thing here is not the art. It is a different way of making sense or opening itself to sense. Pasolini <coughs> is well known as a uh, filmmaker and a filmmaker about the about, um, uh, story of holiness, that is the, the story of uh, Jesus in the, in the film. The story of uh, uh, Saint Matthew. That is the, the, the Gospel of Saint Matthew. Saint Matthew. The Gospel according to Saint Matthew, but that's. Is, ah, yes, yes, you're right. Saint Matthew. You're right, you're right. There's kind of trying to do now. Saint Matthew, yes. Uh, where to make him spontaneous? Where you can see uh, my friend and colleague Agamben. In the whole of uh, the films, of films, mm -hmm. and, the films. Um, and the, 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 the gospel of Saint Matthew by Pasolini is, is a very, very strong film about the gospel and about Jesus because it is uh, it is a non-Christian film. But but it is not not uh, uh, an anti-Christian film. It is beyond this kind of opposition. It is a film made in the attention to a certain figure of uh, Christ, <coughs> which is not a historical figure, but not only a moral figure, despite the fact that it is mainly. Uh, is social and a revolutionary figure, but not only, but not only. And, and there is more, more in, in the work of Pasolini. Uh, and I, I think uh, you, maybe you all know Theorem. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
uh, what is theorem? Theorem is this in entire story of holiness. And uh, there are many uh, saints in, in theorem. Or it starts with, uh, with the, the father giving uh, his, um, his um, fabric and of course. Uh, it is not for that gesture that he is saying. Uh, maybe this gesture is a craziness of imagination of holiness. But uh, the holiness is, uh, is present in so different way. I will not analyze the thing now, but uh, maybe you remember the servant, the, the woman who, uh, who finished by uh, being uh, enterré, um, taken under the earth, you know, uh, very, living. Very, 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 she asked, she asked another woman to bury her, and she died. She died. Uh, and this is a kind of miracle too, because uh, her larmes, uh, tears, her tears, her tears flow over the, the soil and make a like, like the, the, the small um, lack. Lake. Um, well, the, and, uh, it, it is an extremely uh, strong and complicated thing because Pasolini uh, really mixed in the film images of holiness and, and of miracle too. Because there's this woman, she, she, she comes uh, over the soil. Levitation. No. With, uh, of course, Pasolini does not believe to do that. But he used he use images of the holiness in order to say what? What says the film? I think the film says the holiness is everywhere. See, because the holiness is not only not only in the source uh, visible figure of the servant, of, but uh, as well in the figure of the mother. You know, the mother, which was this well known uh, actress, I don't remember who, who she is, uh, who don't know how to to find, to find one, how to find some kind of sense, that is some kind of relation, that is some kind of love. She doesn't know, and she goes from man to the other man, but this quest, this quest of love is precisely uh, being in the middle of, of, uh, of sex and of, and of desperation. Uh, this quest by itself is uh, is holiness as well, and so. But uh, I don't want to enter the analysis of the work of Pasolini. Uh, but uh, many could be said about the poems Pasolini, and as well about the the narration he wrote uh, on his uh, trip in India and. I don't make of Pasolini the saint you know, of the modernity, but uh, I think I think that um, uh, for what we can see and, uh, and designate uh, in our world, in people like him, but as well people like Beckett, you know, or uh, and. Other uh, among the artists uh, has to do with what I call here holiness. That is, that is once again the way of taking 
taking the force of the sacred. Taking the force of the sacred, no longer from a separate place, I would say no longer from a temple, there is no longer any temple there, but from, uh, from the everyday life. Maybe this is a holiness. That is the, the, the capacity to find a blessing, a blessing which maybe is no longer a blessing of God, but a blessing uh, in the ordinary world. In the so-called profane world, but which precisely uh, uh, by this mean, you say, becomes no longer neither profane nor sacred. And to uh, to organize in the ordinary life in the everyday life, the possibility of, of, I would say, nothing else than sense. And that is of relation. And that is of not only of relation to each other, but of the relation of each and of all together to to the infinite self. That is, I would say, the relation to the relation self. Uh, maybe that is today the only way we can uh, indicate as being, if you want, the heritage of the sacred, of the relation to the sacred, the only way uh, without coming back to uh, to any kind of temple of uh, uh, sacred order, uh, and etc. But but uh, certainly. Uh, certainly, I would say this is not possible. Uh, <coughs> I would say without art. Why? Not not that every uh, every saint has to be an artist, or even less that uh, each of us has to be an artist. But, but in the sense that art, if it is, as I said, if it is the way of opening the possibility of forms which are not already given forms and not useful forms, but forms uh, formed or forming themselves just in order to, to form a world, to, to give the possibility of the world, of a world, art is something which is absolutely needed to allow the possibility to think of the world as something else than the, 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 the world uh, of the useness, the world of the so I would say the world without world. The, the world for which uh, in 
French, we have a, a word, uh, the, the word immonde, you know, the world is the monde, in fact. And monde comes from the Latin mundus, mundus meaning uh, pure. So, so, so mundus was supposed to be the, the, the pure unity of the world. Uh, and immonde, French means uh, mean absolutely not pure. Immon means uh, horrible. Uh, um, <coughs> uh, horrible. Um, the signification is uh, between horrible, the, I could say, a, a, a crime. Immon. But I could say the, the, that the, the room is, in, is immune if it is very, very dirty. You know. So it is between dirty and, and um, uh, you say ferocity. Does it exist about ferocity? Mm. No? Mm -hmm. So I would say the immonde is between ferocity and, and, and dirty. Uh, it's it's, 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 it's a word we, we use uh, frequently. I certainly there is a translation to uh, this man did have a, an immonde <coughs> behavior. That is, he, 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 he was a betrayer, for example. Yes, betrayer is immoral. Uh, so the total absence of respect of and total absence of relation to, to other that is immoral. And uh, <coughs> I am tempted to to say today in the world we, we are living in today, we have no choice, or we have the choice between monde or holiness. There is, in the certain way, there is no middle. The middle is, uh, uh, of course, of course, it doesn't depend of our will to become ourselves uh, a saint. Not to become immonde, yes, it depends uh, at least partly from us. But but we we cannot we cannot uh, uh, will uh, become a saint because precisely to, to, to be a saint or to be a saint maybe that has no 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 sense but to to receive the possibility of the holiness or, or to give place to the possibility of, possibility of holiness, that is not a matter of will, that is not a matter of intention. This is precisely something we can, one can only receive, coming from nowhere. But what, to what we can at least pay attention? and maybe a little more than attention, so desire, is only the possibility that within the world something can be open, that it can be an opening within the world. An opening which is not an opening toward another world, but open the world itself, open for what? Only for the possibility that, that it goes from one to the other within the world. So open the world is open the world to the possibility of being a world. And maybe when we open the world uh, by opening the uh, even by opening 
sacred space, of new sacred space, or, or by opening the uh, you know, highway, um, highway, uh, railways, and uh, flying ways, and um, all, all what we open to, to text, matter, energy, all those openings are maybe at the same time a way to close the world and to, to uh, make impossible that the world be a world. I think that is, that is uh, the task uh, that the end of the sacred give to us. But once again, but I will stop and we will take that after the break. Once again, uh, I cannot go without going through art. Maybe not the art we know, maybe not the art uh, as it is, because maybe it is no longer art. But, but art means, at, at the minimum, I would say, art means the to pay attention and, uh, and desire to the possibility of this opening, of the openness. <laughs>